Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are continuing the series of Painting with the Masters and in this episode we're looking at Gustav Klimt. second episode in this series going over classical painters. As a quick recap, the goal of this series is to give you the opportunity to see and learn about historic painters that I had the opportunity to learn about when I was in school. You can check out my previous episode where I went over Baroque painters, mostly Caravaggio, here. And before we get too far into this, remember to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Mochi, no, not on the computer, not on the computer. Gustav Klimt was an Austrian painter, painting in the late 1800s and early 1900s. He is most well recognized for his Golden Phase era paintings, as well as his slightly risque depiction of women. Klimt was one of the founding members of the Vienna Secession, which began in 1897. To sum things up, the official Vienna Academy as well as salons got to decide what was and what was not considered art. Basically, imagine them like the official big-time New York galleries. Gustav Klimt, as well as several other painters, submitted their work and got rejected. And they decided that they were going to start their own movement with their own galleries, and they were going to decide what got to be considered art. They wanted to bring in new blood, expand what was considered real art, as well as look at art as something beyond just a commercial endeavor. Today, it seems ridiculous that Gustav Klimt's art would not be... Hi, hello. Today, it seems ridiculous that Gustav Klimt's art at one point was not considered art. None of that last bit is particularly relevant, but he was a pretty cool guy, so I thought I would include it anyway. For this miniature, I'm going to be looking at Klimt's golden phase, specifically the portrait of Adele Blachbauer. The portrait of Adele Blachbauer, or sometimes referred to as the golden woman, is one of Klimt's most famous paintings and was done at the height of his golden phase. The golden phase was inspired by a trip he made to Italy where he spent time looking at Byzantine artwork. Byzantine art refers to the body of Christian Greek artistic products of the Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire from 330 to 1453 AD. The style is most easily recognized by its flat depictions of subjects and use of gold leaf jewels and colored glass. It was believed that when the light hit these rare materials and this shimmering aura appeared around them, that these icons were lifted from mere pieces of art to literal religious icons. The depictions of Byzantine art were often very simplistic, not because they hadn't developed that type of realism yet, but because they focused on what they believed to be the most important part, which was the elements that were utilized in the pieces of artwork. Klimt was part of the symbolist movement, which as its name would suggest, means that the artists used symbols in their artwork. They wanted to go beyond just literal depictions of the art, but wanted to add another level of nuance by adding hidden symbols into their artwork. When we look at the kiss, which is Gustav Klimt's other most famous piece, and we look at the cloaks that the individuals are wearing, this pattern isn't just a pattern, it's actually representative of the people wearing them. The floral and round pattern on the woman's cloak is meant to symbolize her femininity, while the sharp angles and rectangles on the men's cloak is meant to be a sign of masculinity. In the portrait of Adele Bachbauer, you can see the repetitive use of eyes on her dress. Art historians believe that this is a reference to the ancient Eye of Horus from Egypt. The Eye of Horus was a symbol of health, protection of wealth and of royalty, which Adele Blachblauer was actually a very famous heiress. So this symbolism makes complete sense to be on her clothing. So one of the most interesting things about this painting is the difference between the clothing and the skin. Great care was taken on the hands, face, and decolletage, whereas the cloth is so overly decorated that it blends in with the background. As one art historian put it, the effect of the gold background is to remove Adele Blachbauer from the earthly plane, transforming the flesh and blood into an apparition from a dream of sensuality and self-indulgence. This miniature is Queen Ilosa by Reaper Miniature. 
I chose her because I thought that the triangle pattern on her dress as well as her updo mimicked Adele Blotch Bauer's look in the painting. However, I would have preferred a miniature with a less form-fitting dress, but I did the best I could with what I had available. When painting the hands and face, I wanted to take extra time on these parts. As in the painting, they are one of the only realistic elements, I wanted to take extra care and try to do the same for this miniature. So I went in with inks and added blush to her face, slightly more intense than I normally would to mimic the painting, as well as blushing her lips and then going so far as to add blue under the eyes as that is something that I definitely noticed from the painting. As the face dried, I went in and painted the dress with premium gilding paint by Craftsmark in classic gold. A more vibrant gold would have been preferred, but I already owned this gold and I didn't want to buy another one just for this miniature. But be warned, this paint, first of all, smells awful, so please work in a well-ventilated area. Also, it will ruin your paintbrush, so make sure that you are using one that you don't mind if it gets ruined. The paint dries incredibly fast, and it dries incredibly fast on your brush as well. So if you clean it very quickly, you are able to salvage the brush, but just in case, use a brush you don't care about too much. I'm so am I moving too much? Am I bothering you? I did not add any highlights or shadows to this dress, just the one layer of gold. After that, I took my Windsor Newton size zero and started adding the triangles. One nice thing about mimicking this painting was that Gustave Klimt was not very exact, so I didn't need to worry too much about getting the triangles absolutely perfect. To mimic the eyes, instead of painting literal eyes, I just added a white pupil. I figured that that got it across enough. At this point, I didn't think the dress looked full enough, so I mimicked a pattern found elsewhere in the painting and using light yellow paint added stripes to the dress. So Gustave Klimt's artwork doesn't transfer as neatly as the Baroque era painting technique. So what can we take away from this artist's work? One thing is his ability to draw the viewer's eyes very directly. Whether or not this was actually his point, in his decision to paint with the very decorative fabric and then the rather realistic face and hand, our eyes are automatically drawn to the face first. Perhaps you're not going to use very abstract and very realistic to direct the eye, but it's interesting to note such an unusual technique to do so. What techniques can you come up with that you can use to direct the viewer's gaze? Second is using symbols in your painting. The same way as Klimt used the eye of Horus in The Golden Woman. Perhaps instead of using hearts, you could use roses as a symbol of love. Perhaps if you're painting a king or queen, you could paint her cloak purple, a symbol of royalty, and then add in peacock feathers as well, which can symbolize pride. The point is, is that using symbols can add another layer of nuance and interest to your miniatures. Lastly, I think that this is a great example of building and finding your own unique style. Even if it's something that doesn't necessarily... Mochi, hey! Moch, stop it. Please don't do that. Hey! 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 That's not a good choice. Lastly, it is an example of creating a unique style. If you see something that you like or think is really cool, even if you're not sure how you would use it in miniatures, go ahead and give it a try. Gustav Klimt didn't immediately jump into his golden phase. He began using gold leaf in smaller areas on his paintings leading up to his golden phase. And if it was a feature that I used prominently in several of my miniatures, you would be able to recognize my miniatures a mile away. So if you find something that you think is cool, go ahead and use it. You never know what's going to become your trademark style. I hope that you found this inspiring as well as informational. I love to hear from you. Let me know what you think as well as what artists you would like to see me do or what artists you are going to look at and try to become inspired by. I hope that your miniature painting is going well. Remember to change your paint water, don't eat too much paint, and I'll see you at the next one.